Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I apologize if the lighting's a little bit off, but since I film with natural light, this is just what we're gonna have to deal with. If you have not noticed on my channel, I do not read a ton of fantasy, but one of my goals for 2016, although I don't tend to set tons of goals set in stone, but I was just hoping to read more fantasy, and if you haven't noticed, that has not happened. I've tried about three times to get into A Daughter of the Blood by Anne Bishop. This is a high fantasy series where politically and sexually gender roles are reversed, so women are the ones who are in power in kind of every way, shape, and form, and I cannot get into it for the life of me. I will go back, and I think over this summer, when I have much more time to read, go ahead and delve into this more, but I kind I kind of wanted to reflect on some fantasy novels that I have really enjoyed because I know that there are different genres within the fantasy genre itself so maybe I just haven't been picking up the ones that are really right for me. Because when I was looking at my top fantasy novels I did notice a trend that they tended to be more so related to folklore, they tended to be a little bit tragic and depressing, so I'm going to go through and share those with you guys and of course I would love to hear what your favorite fantasy novels are. So let's go ahead and get into it and this is in no particular order. Order. So first we have Deathless by Catherine M. Valente. I think this was my favorite book of, you guys can help me remember, I think 2014, but this is related to Russian folklore. It's just so beautifully written. This deals with a young girl who marries, uh, his name is Koshe. I'm probably going to pronounce that wrong, Koshe. His name is also Deathless. Oh, and it also deals with some history in the aftermath of the Russian Revolution. This just has a very unique writing style and it did not get the attention that it deserved. So if you want something that's very unique, if you're interested in Russia, go ahead and check this out. So this next, to it's two books, I guess, because I haven't read the third, is The Magicians by Lev Grossman. And I know this is a bit of a controversial one because a lot of people just despise Quentin. I, I wouldn't say I entirely relate to him, but bits and pieces of me do, which is probably why I enjoy this. I will just say if you go into this anticipating it to be adult Harry Potter, you're not going to enjoy it. I know I was talking with my friend Jess, who now watches my videos sometimes, so hello, but that's how she felt. So I think going into it, expecting it to have that Harry Potter feeling is going to kind of ruin the experience for you. It's a lot more depressing than Harry Potter. I believe Quentin's a good person at his core, but he definitely fucks up and, and makes a lot of mistakes. I will say, if anybody spoils the ending for me or even hints at what type of ending there is, just don't say anything. This is, I think, the one series where I'm very sensitive to spoilers because it just holds such a dear place in my heart. So if you tell me the ending, I'm going to show up at your window, go inside your house, and just drink all of your wine. And next we have a book written by a fellow booktuber and one of my friends and that is Roses by G.R. Mannering. This is a fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Her writing style is just absolutely stunning. The way it's written it almost has this sort of folklore quiet quality. I think part of that has to do with both the writing style and the pacing. It's not incredibly fast paced but that's what I personally enjoyed about it. I will post a link below if you want to purchase this but obviously she doesn't know I'm doing that. This is not an affiliate link. She's just my friend and I obviously want to support a fellow booktuber who, who also happens to be a fantastic writer. So now we are going to shift into some of my young adult favorites and I think you'll see with this set it's very indicative of the types of books I was reading when I was around say 15, 14, 15, 16, around that age range. I was pretty obsessive with dark, folklore-related, slightly depressing young adult novels with female protagonists, so you'll see that theme throughout all of these. So the first one is Seven Tears Into the Sea by Terry Farley. The fantasy element of this, and I won't say if this ends up being true or not in the book, but it deals with selkies, if you know what those are, men or women who can shift into seals. I don't know why it took me so long to think of that. This deals with a girl who's about 17 who moves to live with, I think it was her grandmother during the summer, and she starts interacting with this guy she thinks is one. This is also one of those books where it could be awful. It could just be the fact I've read this so many times ever since I was so young that I just can't look at it objectively, so just so just keep that in mind if you read it. And next is one I'm sure a lot of you guys have read, and that is the Gemma Doyle series by Libba Bray. Easily my favorite series by Libba Bray, and possibly my favorite young adult series of all time. This deals with a girl who is sent off to a boarding school after her parents have died, and then it deals with a lot of fantasy elements. Whether you're male or female, I just think this is such a wonderful series, and just it's empowering. It deals with a lot of issues, whether it's sexuality and just a ton of other issues, but I think it's 
such a good series for particularly young adults to read. So if for some reason you have not read those yet, I 100% recommend it. And next is another book like Seven Tears Into the Sea where I've read this one so many times since I was so young. It could be terrible and I just might not be able to realize that anymore. But this is The China Garden by Liz Berry. In this book, a girl who is I think 18 or 19 moves to the English countryside for the summer to this tiny strange town called Ravensmere and there's some English folklore there. I will say the first 50 or so pages of this book are quite slow, but once you get past that, I really love it and it's fantastic, but again, it's just hard for me to go back and look at this and go, do you think you would have enjoyed that at this age or was it just because you were 15? But there's just such a unique, lovely quality to this book. Again, the first chunk's a little slow, but once you get past that, it's great. And finally, we have A Tithe by Holly Black. This is easily my favorite book by her. Whatever the newer Holly Black books are, I just think they read the language just it's not bad, but I just think she's lost her Holly Black voice, and maybe that's presumptuous of me to say, I recognize, but to me at least, her new books are not badly written, but they just feel like very stereotypical YA. Tithe and Valiant, which is the next book in the series, both deal with fae, fairies, and I just remember picking those up when I was maybe 15 or 16 and just thinking, wow, this is not like anything I've read in the young adult realm before. There was just a very adult, dark quality to them, which which I want to be clear, I'm not saying YA needs to have. I just think the writing style itself as well just felt very unique and her new books don't feel that way to me anymore. So those were the fantasy novels that I've read that I have really enjoyed. I would of course love to hear from you guys. I'm getting out of breath. I would of course love to hear from you guys if you've read any of these, if you've enjoyed them or hate them. You guys know I'm honest, so I want to hear your guys' honest opinions about these if you've read them as well. And of course, feel free to leave some recommendations down below as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next week. Actually, maybe not because I have final projects and then finals, but I'm sure a lot of you guys are suffering through that as well. So good luck.